All right, so last week, the NBA released their all-star teams for this season, and that got us thinking, what if we did a kind of a compilation of all-stars for both Duke and and UNC. Harry and I picked our all-time starting five for both of these programs. Harry took UNC. I reluctantly, as a UConn fan, took Duke. <laughs> However, these are the best players from these programs. We will go one through five uh, in position. YouTube chat, let us know if we are missing anybody here. If we omitted anybody, please uh, let us know in the chat there. Harry, you ready to go? 100%. And inevitably, it's going to happen because, as you well know, it was very, very difficult I to pick imagine. these teams. Yeah, right? it really was. Yeah. So, starting off for me, yeah. I got to go at the point guard position. I'm going with Phil Ford, the mm. basically the engineer of the famous four corners offense. And listen, man, you got to be a really good player for your highlights to look like this <laughs> and me to put you on an all-time <laughs> team, right? But Phil was a magician with the ball. You have to have a quick, speedy point guard, was able to get easy buckets, First freshman, actually, to play as a, or under Dean Smith. Now, yep. my next one, easy one, Michael Jordan. Oh, I am yeah. not going to not put the best player <laughs> of all time on my team. That fluidity, the athleticism, you see it there. It was always there. One of the cornerstones of their national title team in 1982 with that famous shot against Georgetown. Yep. Got to put him on the team. Uh, my next one, James Worthy. Has his number retired not just by North Carolina, but also the <laughs> Los Angeles Lakers. Yep. Do you know how good you have to be to have your number retired by both of those teams? Consensus first team All-American, averaged over 15 points per game. That one was an easy choice for me. My next one was an even easier choice, Antoine yeah. Jameson, yep. which I honestly feel like is slept on when we talk about all-time teams with North Carolina. His number 33 also retired. Only player in my starting five and bench without a national championship. But <laughs> still got to put him on here. National player of the year in 1998. Easy choice. And then the last one, you can't not have an all-time North Carolina team without Tyler Hansborough. As annoying as I found him to be growing up, you got to admit, <laughs> the guy was great. National player of the year in 08. Three-time consensus first-team All-American. Yep. Four-time first-team All-ACC. Won a championship, number 50, retired by the Tar Heels. No team is complete without this guy, which is something I never thought that I would ever say when it comes to the North Carolina Tar Heels. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good starting five right there. I mean, Antoine Jameson, I think, we got to remember, was like one of the best players in his, in his time yeah. when he was playing, and I, I do think he was underrated. How about a sixth player coming off the bench for you? Any honorable mentions here? I wanted to go Ty Lawson just because I really loved his game, but I had to go Sam Perkins. I, I, okay. I almost put him in my top five, but I could not have Hansborough in there, so Sam Perkins was an easy choice for me. There's such great teams, too, in like the late 70s, early 80s with those guys yeah. that you said, too. That is uh, the UNC all-time starting five for uh, Harry Lyles Jr. Now, let's see if we can top it on the Duke side here. Let's see what we got. And I'm going to start at the number one spot with a very good friend, Jay Williams. Of course, we know what Jay Will has done uh, on the court. You see him coming up on college game day in just a bit. But, man, he was a reliable scorer. One of the best distributors, too, maybe behind Bobby Hurley um, at Duke. Started all 108 games that he played for the Blue Devils. Averaged north of 21 points. So, I've got Jay Will running point for my all-time starting five. At the two. One of the best shooters to ever step inside Cameron Indoor. That would be J.J. Redick, all-time leading scorer for the Blue Devils. Over 2,700 points, two-time national player of the year. He uh, made 457 threes at Duke, and he shot it north of 40% from the three. At the three, Lyles, I'm going to go with some defense here. Shane Battier, who has a great case to be not only the best defensive player at Duke, but maybe the best defensive player to ever play college basketball. Three-time National Defensive Player of the Year. His 70 ACC wins, by the way, are a league record. In other words, when he was on the floor, they won. Can't leave out this guy. Zion Williamson had one of the great rookie campaigns in NCAA history. Hasn't exactly been the smoothest ride to the next level, but what he did at the scoring level, we know. On the defensive side, though, I think what surprised many, he was second in the ACC in steals, and he was fifth in blocks during his uh, time there. And at the five, Harry, we got to go with Booz, Carlos Boozer. Good friend uh, over on the ACC network. When he was on the floor, man, they won a lot. He was a big reason um, that they lost a total of 11 games when he was there for three years uh, from 2000 to 2002. Also had a double-double in the championship game in 2001 that man. they won. So that is my starting five for Duke. I, I mean, yeah. I don't know. You put these people on the floor. <sighs> man. Who's your bench guy? In their prime. Yeah. I, I, off the bench here. I'm going to go with an honorable mention, Sheldon Williams, who was the all-time leading okay. rebounder 
at Duke. So I, we got the all-time leading scorer in JJ. We got the yeah. rebounder in Sheldon Williams. And I would also like to give an honorable mention shout out to the late great Dick Grote, who played in the 1950s for Duke, and he was the first consensus All-American uh, for the Blue Devils. But he was probably more remembered for what he did actually on the baseball field than what he did on the basketball court. He was uh, eight-time uh, eight MLB All-Star and won a couple of championships with Pittsburgh and St. Louis. So th those are some of my honorable mentions yeah. there. But I don't know. Th these are two really That's... good teams. And yeah. it's one of the reasons why this rivalry is so great. Yeah, and honestly, so like just looking at your team, I think it's perfect. And, it, and like for me, a lot of those guys I grew up watching, like I saw Shane Battier, I saw Jay Will, I saw Carlos Boozer all play in the ACC tournament in like 2001 in Atlanta, like in person. So like those are the dudes that I grew up with. It is still weird to see a Duke all-time list without Christian yeah. Leitner yeah. and without Grant Hill. That's not to say that, that yeah. it's wrong. You're right. There but was... it, is, it is so just mind-blowing. It speaks to the greatness, right, of a program like Duke that you could leave those guys off reasonably and have an all-time team still. It might be unreasonable. There was an intentional effort to uh, omit Mr. Leitner. Hey, I mean, uh, you know, well... I will say I appreciate the efforts. <laughs>